Good morning. It is about last night with your boy DMAC, and we're doing things a little bit differently today as I am going to be on the morning show on Altitude Sports Radio 92.5. My guy, Rob Tregilio, is everybody is on vacation. And when you come to the last desperate straw, Call up your boy DMAC. So I'm recording this ahead of time, um, although it's airing at the regular time. So no DMAX, Max. Oh, I'm sorry. I do love you, but I won't be able to get to your comments today. Not today, but we'll be back with it on Monday. So and 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 later today, I will be live from the um altitude studios with Nate and Chad. If you want to chime in there and a full day uh on plate as I'm back on at noon to three. And then we'll have Hangout Live at 5 o'clock with the first inning watch long for the Rockies and the Mets and about last night as well as I'm trying to get my swimming in. I'll give you my pathetic swim update with Nate Jackson. I mean, I am, um, I'm trying though. At least I'm trying. Want to thank Ed Prather Real Estate. Ed is the absolute best. And the Ed Prather Selling Series, we're so proud of that, is on this channel. You should check it out. It is how I went about selling my home and buying my new home. It has some unbelievable advice for you. And if you're interested in the process and what you got to know to get that home sold, nobody can you trust better than my guy, Ed Prather. Ain't no doubt about it. I'm thinking about breakfast already. No. Yes. No. Yes, I am. Bam. That's the QR code for Journey Spice. It wasn't there, and then it's there like that. It's freaking magic. I love it. That's what you can do to go to Amazon.com. I mean, it's simply, bam, that's going to take you there, and you can save 20% using the code 20TASTYDISH. Organic, non-GMO, no salt. It's unbelievable food, and you could put it on the shrimpies. You can put it on the chicken. You got the Greek rub on the salmon. I mean, what do you want to make? They're there for you. It is Journey Spice. Flavor in plastic out. Thank you, Andy. And you're absolutely the best. We love you so much. It's Journey Spice Company. About last night, the ESPYs were last night. And usually we're used to the ESPYs being around the All-Star game. I don't know why it's now. And when, blah, 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 blah. what do I know? What do I care? But the one speech, and it was great hearing Steve Gleason give an inspiring speech, but it was Prince Harry's acceptance speech for the Pat Tillman Award for Service. Now, you have to understand, Prince Harry has put together the Invictus Games that benefit, um, I mean, all sorts of people. So it's not like Prince Harry himself, although he is a, you know, a veteran in the British military. Um, I think it's worthy, and this is the best way for me to do it. I know it's not great to play it this way. But let's do our best and listen to Prince Harry from the ESPYs last night. You don't go to stay here, um, um, thank you, Elizabeth, Israel, and Kirsty. Um, stay here. You need to be with me. Um, I'd like to begin by expressing my deepest gratitude to everyone at the Pat Tillman Foundation, led by Marie Tillman Shenton, who I'm so honored is here tonight. I'd also like to acknowledge the Tillman family, especially Mrs. Mary Tillman, Pat's mother. Her advocacy for Pat's legacy is deeply personal and one that I respect. The bond between a mother and son is eternal and transcends even the greatest losses. The truth is, I stand here not as Prince Harry Pat Tillman Award recipient, but rather a voice on behalf of the Invictus Games Foundation and the thousands of veterans and service personnel from over 20 nations who have made the Invictus Games a reality. This award belongs to them, not to me. That said, it is of great importance to me to highlight these allies, athletes, and their amazing families for their achievements, their spirit, and their courage at every opportunity, especially on nights like this, in front of people like you. Moments like these help us reach those that need Invictus most and reduce more than 20 veterans a day talking, taking their own lives in this country alone. For those who may not know, 
Invictus comes from Latin, meaning undefeated or unconquerable. Nelson Mandela credited the poem of the same name, written by the poet William Ernest Henley, for giving him the strength to endure nearly 30 years of imprisonment. Like that poem, the spirit of the Invictus Games transcends race, time, and borders. It is born from unity and exudes purpose. This year, we're celebrating 10 years of witnessing life-changing impact and healing through sport. <laughs> and while so much progress has been made since those first games, the world outside seems to be in an even more precarious state. We live in an age marked by polarization and division. Conflicts rage around the globe. Anger and resentment towards those who are different seem to pervade societies everywhere. Our community challenges that. Our community proves that unity is not just possible, but formidable. The beauty of the Invictus Games lies in how it brings people together, no matter one's nationality, background, or personal struggles. It is a collective built from courage and mutual respect, where athletes discover time and time again the common denominator of their humanity. Having survived the crucible of armed combat and forged through the challenge to rebuild bodies and minds impacted by conflict, they form a family. They exemplify the very best in all of us. There is a military expression that dates back to Roman times. I'll spare you another Latin lesson. But the phrase, the phrase translates, or the phrases translates roughly, to leave no one behind. And they hold particular significance for the US Army's Rangers. And I have no doubt Pat Tillman and his comrades lived by those words. So it is fitting that I end with them and make a promise on behalf of all of us at the Invictus Games Foundation. No matter the road ahead, we are here for you. We will leave no one behind. Thank you. Wow, man. What a speech. Wow. <clears throat> it's not him. He represents thousands and thousands of um, veterans. Man, that chokes me up. And he lost his mom, okay? That is, um, that's awesome. Way to go, Prince Harry. Well, well done. Elegant speech. Uh, you know, when, when you have that kind of fame and wealth, whatever, what do you do with it? And um, that's pretty awesome. Well, it actually does choke me up a little bit. Okay. Ha. Ah. Well, it wasn't all, um, you know, it wasn't all seriousness there at the good old ESPYs. Um, Venus and Serena did a wonderful job hosting. And they, uh, I think they went off script a little bit to throw Harrison Butker under the bus. So go ahead and enjoy women's sports like you would any other sports because they are sports. Yes. Except you, Harrison Butker. We don't need you. See, they, they didn't cut to Harrison Butker. They didn't, like, then pan over to him. They, usually, if you're giving somebody a hard time and whatever, it's all kind of planned out. They cut to you, get your reaction shot. Uh, that, I, think that was a, I think that was a little off script. So. so go ahead and enjoy women's sports like you would any other sports because they are sports. Yes. Except you, Harrison Butker. We don't need you. Okay, well, there you go. So, um, good for Venus and Serena, and, uh, and and that's that. About last night, more fallout, sort of, from the Big 12 um, media day and the relationship between Prime and uh, Jay Norvell does not appear to be getting any better. Uh, Jay Norvell 
um, was asked about, you know, Prime, and his response was simple. Um, asked if anything's changed with CU Buffs coach Deion Sanders after last year's game. Quote, I don't have any feeling for Deion Sanders. I really don't. I don't think about Deion Sanders unless you guys ask me a question about him. No, nothing's changed. <laughs> Okay, well, there you go. Isn't that fun? Um, in terms of Prime at Big 12 Media, he was asked about legacy. What legacy and or impact do you hope to have on the world of sports as a player and or as a coach? Um, both, really, I don't care. Like how you see me, how you look at me. I'm more apt to understand how I see me and how I look at me and how God sees me and how he looks at me. So really I, I i don't care how you see me it it is never going to be enough nothing i do is ever going to be enough so it, i'm cool with that i've i've understand i understand that that is life and that's how life is going to be but i plan on being a tremendous blessing to as many people that i can bless especially those probably 120 young men that uh puts on this cu helmet and go out there and to, to play for our school and our program so uh and to sum it all up, man, I just want to be known as a great dad. I think I got three sons here today, and I just want to be a great dad to them. That's it. Thank you, my man. I appreciate you. All right, we'll stay on the right side. We'll go. All right, well, that's cool, man. I, I, I think everybody wants to be, who's a dad, wants to be considered a great dad. I got no problems with that. Uh, but not all that warm and fuzzy with Jay Norvell. Don't forget, see, you has to play in Fort Collins. That can be an intimidating place about last night when it comes to your Rockies they lose eight to one and this one was just one they were never in the game at any point they were down three nothing after three four nothing after four four to one and then they imploded in the bottom of the seventh um, giving up four more runs nobody pitched particularly well Gomber seven hits four runs all earned Molina came in. He stunk in two thirds of an innings. Five hits, four runs, all earned. Um, Ty blocked it all right, finishing things up. But you know, you didn't hit. You struck out thirteen times against four walks. You only got six strikeouts. It's just a game where you just played like crap. You didn't seem to be all that passionate about it. You're now thirteen and thirty-four on the road, thirty-three and sixty-one um, in terms of your overall record. It's um, not great. I mean, you're trending towards the worst season ever, and it was pretty bad last year. You find yourself 22 games behind the Dodgers, uh, 33 and 61. Believe it or not, you're a half game ahead of the Marlins, who are 32 and 61, and the White Sox are pathetic at 27 and 68. Next up is the A's at 35 and 60. So I suppose they're within the. Uh, within reach, but you got three games until the all-star game. Um, uh, and let's see if they can't put something together, but you just can't give up. And last night just felt like a game where they were giving up and that doesn't feel good, <sighs> but we're here for it. We'll have a first inning watch along right around five o'clock as they take on the Mets for a three game set. And then Saturday and Sunday are both afternoon games. And I think it's supposed to be 172 degrees. So it might be a good day to be inside if you have air conditioning. About last night, Tour de France continues, but without Roglic. Roglic got caught up, unfortunately. Um, hold on, is that Roglic? Wait a second. Nope, sorry. That was Jay Norville. Roglic, here it is. Um, this is unfortunate. Uh, Roglic underwent careful examination by our medical teams from Red Bull Cycling uh, after yesterday's stage. And again, this morning, the decision has been taken that he will not start today to focus on upcoming goals. We wish you a speedy recovery, Primo. This sucks, man. He's one of four guys that was contending for the GC general classification to actually win the Tour de France. And without him in there, it just ain't the same. So, uh, unfortunate situation um they call it road furniture meaning that there's just these little indiscriminate barriers that are like little humps in the middle of the road for no real apparent reason uh in these small towns in france and listening to the move podcast um uh 
Bradley Wiggins, Lance Armstrong, George Hincapie were all just advocating for just take these things out. The towns, especially the finishing towns, all get paid. Just take out these barriers. Take them out. Or you got to do a much better job giving cyclists a heads up that they're they're coming up. And that's what caused this crash. And Roglic got caught up in the back of it and took the worst for wear. So um, it's really a shame. It really, really sucks that that's why one of the contenders for the overall tour win. And he was in the back a little bit. Not much, though. I mean, anything can happen, obviously. So Vindigo and um, Pogacar um, will battle it out today. They're in the Pyrenees, I believe. Big mountain stage today, and that's going to separate things. And Roglic theoretically would have been right there, but he's too hurt, too banged up. It's not really worth it. So there you go. Lousy way for somebody to, you know. And that's what they were afraid with the uh, gravel stage, that something goofy like that would happen. About last night, it looks like it was a good time for dinner. The Broncos had a little meal. And, you know, it's kind of funny in this photo. This is Jared Cinnamon. You won't see Bo Nix or Zach Wilson. Now, I was told that they were there at some point. But you got Cortland Sutton and Jaleel McLaughlin. And you got uh, Tim Patrick, as well as Jared Stidham. So it's good to see the guys get together, having a good time you know, breaking bread a little bit. I, I was told that Wilson and um, uh, uh, Bo Nix were there, although not photographed in this one. So I, I don't know why, but there you go. We'll get into this with Nate and Chad coming up in uh, Chocolate Paint at 9 a.m. And we'll talk about dinner photos. We'll talk about Prime. We'll talk about what you got to know with the NFL, the CU Buffs, and your Denver Broncos. And in terms of other things going on last night, yesterday, I thought if I'm the Pirates and Paul Skeens, who's having an incredible year, goes seven no-hit innings, man, I'm letting him go. I know he had 99 pitches, but I kind of don't care. The opportunity to throw a no-hitter is second to none, but they took him out of the game. I wouldn't do it. I'd leave him in there. Um, but, hey, man, that's me. And the analytics with – um the analytics now with baseball sometimes can be a little bit suffocating when you just come to what's really freaking cool. And throwing a no-hitter is a cool deal. And the Pirates took him out because he was at 99 pitches, I guess. I don't think his arm was going to fall off if he threw 120 to 130 pitches. But, you know, there you go. Okay, so, again, doing a different version of about last night in terms of the Nuggets. We have we have uh, summer league action tonight, so we'll have a little bit of a watch along with that as the Nuggets play against the Clippers in summer league action. That can be seen on altitude. Your Avalanche, no big hockey news to talk of and in terms of the Broncos. I said we'll get to that coming up at nine o'clock with Nate and Chad and your Rockies um, taking on the Mets. So we got a nice day. I understand it's supposed to be a possible record breaker of one hundred and one degrees. So stay as cool as you can, and remember if you have a house that sucks <laughs> suffering ed prather ed prather real estate ed prather.com and in terms of making everything just taste better and be better for the environment flavor and plastic out with our great friends from journey spice the code's been going down here this whole time use the code 20 flavor or tasty dish 20 tasty dish to save 20 percent at amazon.com okay Going to, uh, you can hear me right now if you want on Altitude Sports Radio 92.5 with my guy Robert Tregilio, and uh, we'll have fun doing that. And then Nate and Chad later on. It's Kill You a Truth. It's a Friday, baby. Good to be with you on a Friday.